How's it going, everyone? My name is Michael SK, and welcome back to hell. I mean, how else am I supposed to describe what we're looking at to start this episode off, am I right? Now, welcome back to Saya no Uta. Uh, last episode ended off fantastically. I mean, what do you expect? Th this game is practically made to just, you know, break you down and, and show you every sort of enhentai tag that has been created, or at least it seems like it. Uh, no, we ended off on a on a note that is uh, pretty dark, I would say. Saya is experimenting. Saya being not the person we thought she was when we first started. Uh, but I think my predictions are pretty, pretty close to what they might actually, or what the actuality is. She is experimenting in trying to see if she can cure Fuminori. And that has led to the neighbor being basically put into the same situation as Fuminori. I wonder how he will see Fuminori. Probably the same, that makes, probably make the most sense, because Fuminori is still human. Um, Saya, not so much. And because of this, I guess, uh, I guess the neighbor, whatever his name is, I've already forgotten, is now assaulting Saya. I can't actually say what's happening because then this video is going to get heavily demonetized. So let's, let's not do that. As always, the sights of the city grate on my nerves. Today, however, I don't feel as much hatred as I usually do. I have grown more accustomed to my condition, but that is not the reason for today's high spirits. My search for er, my search of the Ogai house has finally borne fruit. When I pulled all the drawers out of the desk in the study, I found an envelope stuck between the desk and the wall. It must have fallen off the back of the writing tray. Yeah, again, how is Fuminori actually being able to investigate the house? Is that a plot hole? Like, how how is he able to discern what anything is when everything looks like this? Inside were three outdoor photographs. I couldn't recognize the scenery due to my condition, but I'm pretty sure that they show three buildings. Scrawled on the back of each photo was an address. Nagano Prefecture, M Village. Tochiki Prefecture, S Town. Shizuoko, Shizuoko? Uh, however you pronounce letters, Prefecture, H-Town, sorry. Uh, none of the names is familiar, so they must be way out in the countryside. The photos are all dated more than 10 years ago, and I don't know why they were taken or what they mean, but maybe Saya will be able to make some sense of them. Ah, uh, we're heading home. Great. Well, I was hoping to get away. Well, actually, no, that's stupid. I'm stupid. I was originally hoping, oh yeah, you know, there, there, there's probably not going to be anything to censor in this. I can just record for like 30 minutes to 40 minutes because I'm kind of restrained on time. Don't have to edit anything out. Nope, that doesn't seem to be the case as we're heading straight to where we were ending off the last episode. Great. In any case, this is something that even Saya missed while she was living in that house. I wonder how she'll react when I show her what I found. Saya. I want to I want so badly to see her the thought of her waiting for me speeds my footsteps oh she's waiting all right when I step through the gate I see that the front door is wide open again this is the second time this has happened upon entering the house this time however the sound of Saya crying chills my blood and it's not just her I also hear a low wet grunting there's no time to take off my shoes. I race down the hallway, propelled by a terrifying premonition. That is terrifying. Oh my god. Alright. I guess, um... Hmm. I don't know what I expected, but yeah. And I, I kind of talked about, you know, the opposite kind of coming up. Whenever Fuminori is doing shit with Saya... He's literally fucking a monster, right? A monster is in my house and it's raping Saya. Oh, there's the word. The filth oozing from its body spreads across her skin as it drives itself with animal ferocity between her weakly trembling thighs. The monster forces its grotesque penis deeper and deeper into her, each brutal thrust warping her vagina in clearly painful ways. This music is, is definitely something. Like, it's not loud, but because of, like, how righteous it is, 
it's probably not as easy to hear me as if, like, no music was playing or some soft, melancholy music is playing. Each time the beast moves, Saya's sobs become cries of agony. She looks at me with tear-filled eyes and calls my name in a weak, breathless voice. Rage erupts inside me like black lava. The monster stops gorging itself on Saya's body and turns its head to look at me. Surprised by my own composure, I slip past it and grab the meek lever sitting next to the sink. Without a moment's hesitation, I slash at the monster's face. Well, that's gross. It screams and staggers away from Saya. My attack must have blinded it because it failed or flails its tentacles wildly as it tries to drive me away. My bloodlust still unsated, I calmly seize one of the appendages and plunge my weapon twice more into its quivering flesh. The blade enters its body with fascinating ease. Each strike sprays my face with its blood. Alright. As I carve the monster to pieces and savor its hideous screams, my mind is finally cons- Yeah, my mind is finally consumed by rage. Why finally? Are you waiting for it? No mercy, I'll see this monster suffer for what it's done to Saya. I give myself to the fury, as we can hear, howling at the top of my lungs as I slash and slash and slash and slash. Even after the flesh beast stops moving, I keep slashing until I realize that I can no longer feel pain. Cursing myself for killing it so quickly, Okay, thank you, game. I, I stabbed the cleaver into the floor, snapping it in half. When my thoughts finally begin to regain some cohesion, I find myself still digging the broken knife into the floor. The monster is gone, but pieces of it are scattered everywhere. I stop cutting into the tile, and in the sudden silence, I hear Saya's faint sobs coming from a corner of the kitchen. Saya. <gasps> Now, this is a beautiful scene, but, like, half of it is going to just be blacked out for you guys. I pull the cowering Saya into my arms. She stiffens in fear at first, but as soon as she realizes that it's me, she clings to my body and cries. I don't know what to say. I can only keep holding her. This should never have happened to Saya. Everything in this twisted world is to blame. Yes, including myself. I couldn't protect her. If I'd been here, then maybe I could have prevented this. She says again and again in a voice choked with tears. Not wanting to hear that from her, I pull her head into my chest. I try to reassure her, but she shakes her head vigorously in denial. I don't understand. What is she saying? She answers, glancing at the dismembered monster with her swollen eyes. It takes me some time to understand the meaning of Saya's words. Finally regaining her composure, Saya responds to my confusion in a low voice. どこをどう維持ではいいのかはその生き物によってまちまちだからちゃんと勉強してからでないとダメだけど海のりの脳に何があったのか私は下調べして分かってたからだから同じことができるかどうか他の人で実験してみたの
My heart aches at the loneliness in her voice as she confesses her sorrowful wish. She starts crying into my chest again, unable to say any more. I gently rub her back while trying to get my jumbled thoughts together. What is Saya that she can do such a thing? The answer is beyond me. However, there is one thing that I can answer here and now. Saya is mistaken. <laughs> Well, I mean, eh, kinda, because he wouldn't be kind to her if it wasn't for the accident. He would basically perceive her the same way that everybody else does. I smile and shake my head. Some of so much more. Yeah, I, I don't think he understands that she isn't human. Or maybe there's a hinting suspicion that he has. Bokto Saya is still crying, but now her tears feel warm against my cheek. Her smile shines through her tears. Now more than ever, I feel the depth of the bond between us. Excuse me, and I'm sure that Saya feels it too. I wrap my arms tightly around her and seal her lips with mine. Saya responds, winding her arms around my neck as her tongues desperately seek each other's warmth. At this moment, Saya is my whole world and I am hers. The earth turns for us alone. Of course, I still haven't told her something very important. I don't know why I've never said it before. Perhaps because it was always so obvious. However, I should put it into words at least once. This oath of mine. Saya. I love you. Come on, say it. Mate. She stops me with a finger against my lips. Saya nods, staring into my eyes with unusual solemnity. さっきも言ったけど、私には私にしかできない方法で生き物の体に干渉できる。人間の脳を維持る方法もこれでちゃんと確認が取れたわ。だから。Saya pauses and takes a deep breath before continuing. Until now, that hasn't been or hasn't even been in the realm of possibility. I replay Saya's words in my head to be sure of their meaning. I... Oh no... Shit... Okay, so I'm going to make some assumptions. Um, also with half the screen being blacked out, sorry. Uh, our first choice of want it all back, I feel like is going to be leaving Saya. Because if we go back to the way things were, we're giving up our love for her to return to our life. The life that we lost. 
don't need it anymore is probably the romance route. We we sticking with Saya. Fuck the world. But the thing is, I don't know what's recommended to go for first. But honestly, it shouldn't matter. I, I think somebody in the comments of one of the earlier episodes stated which one I should save for last. But I don't know. I mean, I've done things out of order before. Um, I, I think the important part is that I'm going through the game blind and I'm going with the decision I think is best. So I strongly don't feel romantic right now. Not at all. Uh, I think it'd be best if Huminori went back to his old life. But at the same time, I'd like to see what would happen to him if he continued to stay the way that he is. That I'm also very curious about. But I think I'm more curious about how his life will look for him going back, you know, to the way things were. And I don't know, maybe the realization that, yeah, goodbye, Saya. Uh, I mean, I'm playing both routes. I'm playing everything that this game has to offer. I don't think it matters too much which one I go for first. But I think I want to go with the want it all back first. I think it'd be more interesting for me to see uh, first what happens if we try to go back. If we try to see life through Fuminori's eyes uh, really before everything went down. And honestly, he's going to go to the realization that, oh shit, I just, I killed people. He's already losing his humanity. Do we want him to lose more of it for the sake of somebody who's not even human? That's kind of what, what I'm thinking here. So I'm going to go with this. Why did I not save the fucking game? Why did I not do that? Uh, okay, so I think there's actually a quick load. Uh, shit, should we? Maybe? Haha, -ha, I am so fucking good at this shit. Okay, so we can actually do a save here. Uh, this is quick save, that's not at all what I want. Uh, open save, load menu. What the fuck? Oh, okay, there we go. Sorry, I am stupid. Um, okay, I'm gonna do this on two because there's titties in this, and I don't want to have to, like, censor this every fucking time I load, and then we can go back to one. Okay. Uh, we should be good. Want it all back. So, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure 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 I answer without thinking. I've never wondered if there could be any other answer. I stopped dwelling on this question a long time ago, and if I'd been asked before I met Saya, I wouldn't have hesitated. But what about now? What does it mean to wish for the past? And what could it do f to me and Saya? As soon as these questions occur to me, my true feelings become unclear. The hurried answer I just gave her was less certain than I thought. So. I mean, I'm not surprised by her reaction. Saya smiles softly, her expression an unreadable mixture of what seemed to be sorrow and relief. Seeing it fills me with sudden unease, as though I've just wounded her deeply with my careless words. Saya silences me with another kiss and thrusts her tongue into my mouth with even greater passion than before. As the sweet softness of her tongue clouds my mind, I begin to feel an urgent need to say what she prevented me from saying, to speak those most important words. Saya. I can't speak for some reason and my mind is hazy. My consciousness is slipping away as the euphoria from her kiss spreads to my entire body. I don't think that's a kiss anymore, buddy. I hear Saya whisper softly from far away. Alright. I can't wait to see blood and shit. 
Like, everything we saw originally was, like, already terrible, but now we're, we're, we're kind of going back to the reality of everything. Uh, we're still just with a blank screen. Wait, I have to tell you something before I sleep. Just one thing. My efforts are meaningless, however, as Oblivion calls me into its embrace. Oh, hey. When I awoke, the first thing that greeted me was a terrible stink. Mr. Suzumi's body was covered in flies, and I could smell the rotten stench that you would expect from a corpse. The night had ended, but Saya was nowhere to be seen in the morning light. Aside from the blood-covered floor, the kitchen looked the same as it had before the accident. In the den, however, the colors that had been so soothing the day before now served as a stark reminder of what a distant world I'd been living in. Despite knowing that it would be futile, I wandered the house searching for Saya. For almost an hour, I tried in vain to deny reality. Then I called the police. When the operator answered, I couldn't stop myself from crying. It had been such a long time since I'd heard a human voice other than Saya's. As became clear later, Mr. Suzumi had murdered his family before I killed him. Unable to give the police a satisfactory explanation, I was arrested for all three murders? Oh my god. And when they found the remains of Takahata Omi in my house, a fourth was added to the charges. During my interrogation, I told them everything exactly as it happened in every detail. The detectives didn't believe me, of course, but the doctor who came later did. He had moved, or he had me move from the jail to a much cleaner white room. Ah, uh, of course, because we're crazy. That's right, this room looks just as white to me as it does to everyone else. In the end, they declared me incapable of answering for my actions. Everything that had happened to me was real, but part of a reality incompatible with the rest of the world. So the doctors gave me a space all to myself, a place where I could live in my own world. I am sad that I wasn't believed, but I know that it couldn't be helped. In this world, reality is what the majority says it is, and I had the misfortune to step outside of that box. The walls of my room are undeniably white, that at least I can be thankful for as I live out the rest of my life here. Everyone said that there was never any girl named Saya. Well, so be it. Saya was probably never part of their world. But why shouldn't I be able to hear Saya's voice here in my room? This is my world, after all, a continuation of the very real time that we spent together. How long did I wait, with such thoughts floating through my mind? One night I awoke to the sound of something crawling down the hallway. The sound would not normally have woken me, but I must have had a premonition that night. Sleeping lighter than usual, I had waited for her arrival. And so I knew instantly that it was her. Are we gonna see what she looks like in ghoulish form? She did not answer, but I could feel her outside my door, struggling with some eternal conflict. After a long silence, something small slid through the narrow bars of my peephole. It was a cell phone, the screen already showing a notepad with freshly entered text. My voice will sound strange to you. I couldn't suppress a chuckle at Saya's uncharacteristic display of shyness. I said, sending the phone back through the bars. After a short pause, the phone returned to my side. Please let me stay the Saya you remember. Soka. I'd started to suspect that it might be so. In the hell my eyes had made of the world, Saya alone had looked normal. I thought that she was somehow unique. In truth, however, she had probably been a different kind of unique than I'd imagined. It wasn't that my senses had distorted her appearance but that she had been so unusual as to seem normal to my twisted mind. Saya's true form was something other than what I had known. Now, however, I could see her as she really was. But Saya didn't want that, and it was not for me to question the workings of her heart. 
I just had to accept that girls need to keep some things private. I don't think that's one of those things, my man. I slid the phone back to her. I was hoping you'd forgotten. I smiled wryly at the text on the screen, wondering if she really thought me so heartless. No one was listening, but still. I, it would have been embarrassing to speak the rest al aloud, so this time I typed it into the phone. G-H-I, that's how you get to I. J-K-L, that's how you get to the L. And I mean, I'm, uh, come on, we, we all know how to type like this, right? I slid the phone back through the slot. I could sense her trembling outside my door. I couldn't hear her or see her, but still I knew. Saya was crying. Perhaps my words offered no comfort spoken so late. Even so, I was ready. I had wanted to return to my old life true, but I would have abandoned that wish for Saya. I know that I would have gone with her hand in hand as far as we could, even to the most forbidden of places. Saya, too, must have known that I was prepared. And because she knew, she stopped me from saying those words. If I had spoken that oath, there would have been no going back. I'm sorry I was a coward. Seeing the words on the screen, I shook my head. I was afraid of you. Of how you were changing because of me. Saya couldn't bring herself to take everything from me, and I couldn't bring myself to give up everything for her. We were too weak to find happiness. I'll keep searching for my dad. He'll know how to send me back to where I came from. A short time passed with no words or messages exchanged. I wonder how many times in that brief silence yes and no changed places in her mind. Yeah. When the phone finally returned, the characters on the screen seemed strangely uncertain. I'll do my best. The time had come for our parting. She had chosen her path, and I had given my blessing. There was nothing more to be said. I will. Thank you. Goodbye, Fuminori. Oh, that's a goodbye. She ain't coming back. I read her final message and returned the phone to the other side. Sayonara. Sayonara. She gently slapped my door in response, and then I heard the sound of her sliding off the hall or sliding off down the hallway, excuse me. And I was left alone in the silence of the night. Ever since that day, I have been waiting. Perhaps Saya really did return to where she came from. Perhaps she is still wandering today looking for her father. It must be hard. She must be lonely. When she can no longer stand being alone, she will surely return to me. I am the only one who will come for her and whisper sweet nothings in her ear. And so I wait, dreaming of her face and her voice. I wait. Forever in my white world. Alright. That was not the right choice. And I think that's a good thing that I didn't choose the other one first. It really just jumped to like, alright, well, uh, you want to go back to reality? Well, reality is you literally killed a person, she killed a person, and the person that you killed killed his family. Oh, and you're being blamed for all of it because, you know, you kind of kept your uh, mental issues to yourself. Which, again, you can't really blame him for that. I mean, he, uh, if he did, he would have been experimented on for sure. He even brought that up, and that is totally understandable. Well, uh, gamers, this was, uh, this was a fun little, little way to just see the end of this. So... I kind of, you know, saw, you know, when he was getting arrested and then thrown into the white room, I'm like, okay, yeah, there's no way that this is going to be continuing on the story. Everything is just ending right now. 
we kind of gave up is basically what that decision was. So now we need to not give up and basically dedicate ourselves to Saya, which I'm assuming will allow us to find her father and maybe something can be done to help her and ourselves. There has to be a happier ending, right? Unless this is one of those games where it's like, okay, you, you only get like one decision. You can either be happy or you can just keep on trudging along and just be in pain. It's like a near automata sort of way to go about it or something. I don't know. Uh, man. So far, this has been a lot of fun, though. I am, I am positive that we are far from being done. Maybe far is like an like exaggeration. This is a short visual novel as is, but I feel like there there is a bit to go, a, a bit more to see. So uh, I definitely wanna see what happens as we continue along choosing the other decision and uh, well, admitting to Saya right then and there that we love her and she'll probably say it back and everything will just kind of continue along. Everybody is continuing to be wary of uh, of Fuminori. His house is getting stinkier and stinkier and getting painted on more and more. Yeah, I just I think we have so much more to go. We have a sound library now. That's that's a new little thing. I don't think that was there before. I could be wrong. There's a staff comment uh, that has completely booted me out of the game. Um. Hmm. It is in Japanese. I will look into the staff comment later. Uh, but now that I have made the window somehow worse, we're going to end it here because I don't know how to fix this without just closing the game. Uh, thank you all for watching this episode. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, all that fancy jazz. And next time we will continue on in the other direction which I'm highly assuming actually continues the overall story. Uh, I'm happy that we were able to find a, a little teeny tiny detour and see what happens if we just decided to be a hesitating piece of shit and go back to our reality. That was fun, but it is true that, okay, you know, Saya is the key and we need to stick with her. So we'll see what happens next time. Take it easy, guys.